Lucky you to be able to work on what's probably the most incredible project. How did you end up with this? Remarkable. A man named Nigel Sinclair, who's a you know, fantastic uh, producer, has done a lot of great rock and roll documentaries, was also involved in a movie that I directed called Rush about Formula One racing. Yeah. Uh, he saw uh, a documentary that I made uh, about uh, Jay-Z's music festival, and he invited me into this process, and yeah. I had the opportunity to, to meet and interview uh, you know, Ringo, Paul, uh, work closely with the families. It's mm -hmm. been great to get to know them. We yeah. focus on the touring years. So it's about sort of 62-ish through 66, which is their final big tour. But it's such a dynamic, dramatic, mm -hmm. and exciting period. You were very young then during those years, the British invasion. What do you remember of that time? I, well, I saw them on Ed Sullivan for my 10th birthday. My request was a beetle wig. And I was so excited <laughs> to get my beetle wig. And I'm looking over here, and I'd say my wig looked a little like George's. <laughs> I tried to encapsulate this period and make it as revealing and intimate about mm -hmm. the band. Through it all, there was a kind of brotherhood, a relationship. Yeah. Maybe I didn't quite expect the power of that. I find that, I find that kind of emotional. Yeah. While all this was going on, their lives were changing, our lives were changing, they were creating and working on the road, and yet their artistry kept evolving in ways that's truly profound. Is there a Beatle you most identify with? I think Paul McCartney and his sort of showmanship, his love of the audience mm -hmm. and wanting to connect and tell a story is something that yeah. I probably relate to best. But they're all geniuses. Right. Their music, it yeah. speaks to all generations. It still does. It's remarkable. Still, There's nothing antique day, about it. It's, my you know, kids love their music as much as I do. It's fresh. It's immediate. It's because of the genius of the writing yeah. and, and the execution. So as a storyteller, always looking for something that might surprise audiences. Yeah. It's been really a pleasure. Well, you've got Inferno coming out, the latest adaptation of the Dan yeah. Brown books. It's been a while. Well, it has been a while. Yeah. And Tom Hanks and Brian Grazer, the producer. And I don't look at this as a series we have to service. Mm -hmm. we, we look at them as individual s stories written by Dan Brown. They're great cinematic opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so when the script comes yeah. around and we really believe the movie can be strong, then we go. And it's a great acting opportunity for Tom Hanks. And of course, he and knows, you two he knows go what he... way back, back yeah. to your splash days when you directed him. You must have great stories about Tom. Well, he's, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he's a pleasure. He's got a great sense of humor. And it never really stops until you roll cameras. And then, you know, he just, he locks in with such focus and intelligence. Of course, when the lead actor or actress in mm -hmm. a film carries that sort of creative ambition uh, and that work ethic, it's a pleasure for the director. Ron Howard again and the Beatles, eight days a week. The touring years hits theaters September 16th. It'll be available exclusively on Hulu, a streaming service partly owned by NBC Universal the very next day. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.